you've got to make sure you have adequate levels of vitamin D3. And the average person should take a bare minimum of 5,000 international units of vitamin D a day. A uh, paper written from the University of California, San Diego a few years ago after extensive research into humans think that the average American should take 9,600 international units of vitamin D3 a day to have adequate levels of vitamin D. I personally have not seen vitamin D toxicity after 20 years of measuring this in thousands, tens of thousands of patients. Uh, again, I recently talked with Mark Hyman in his practice. He has yet to see vitamin D toxicity. I personally don't think it exists, but even if it does, 10,000 international units a day um, is what the University of California, San Diego recommends. You probably have heard me talk before. If I feel I am coming down with virus, I personally take 150,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day for three days in a row. That's almost 500,000 international units of vitamin D over a three-day period. I've been doing that now for about 18 years. Uh, I'm not dead yet, and so far so good. Sunlight is one of the best ways to generate vitamin D in your bloodstream, the active form. So whatever you do, get yourself a half an hour exposure to sunlight, wherever you are. And that's one of the best tricks. Yeah, so if you think that you're getting infected with, you know, a virus, whether it's the flu, whether it's the coronavirus, this is exactly what I would recommend to you. Um, and again, it's exactly what I do when I feel like I'm coming down with something. If you want to, you know, just say, wow, that sounds like a lot of vitamin D, which I used to think was, I used to take 50,000 a day for three days in a row. And interestingly enough, I had a few episodes of breakthrough. Uh, in other words, it didn't work. And so I talked with one of my colleagues in Texas, uh, Dr. Osborne, who said, ha! That's much too low a dose, no wonder. You, you should be taking 150,000 a day. Said, wow, that's a lot. And he said, oh, th that's actually what you need to work. Vitamin D is actually one of the best antiviral hormones there is, and it's a hormone, it's not a vitamin. It's good for what ails you or what might get you. If you ask anybody who takes 5,000 units of vitamin D a day, they'll tell you they just don't get sick anymore. Your colds and flu just don't, they just don't happen. I'm osteocalcin, the protein responsible for putting calcium into the bone matrix, creating healthy, strong, dense bones. You see, bone is a living tissue. It grows and gives, providing a resilient structure. But when bone is porous, lacking structure, it is neither strong nor resilient. Like other proteins, I need to be synthesized. That's where vitamin D comes in. Yet even after being synthesized, I'm not ready. I'm a K-dependent protein. So I need vitamin K2 to activate me. But once D synthesizes me and K2 activates me, I'm ready to take calcium right where the body needs it to build strong, healthy bones. And if you're looking for the best vitamin K2, look for supplements containing Minute Q7 vitamin K2 as MK7. Minute Q7, the only clinically proven vitamin K2. 
Well, a new study revealed that a certain vitamin can reverse the aging of your heart. Christopher Speed is here. He's a registered dietitian and nutritional scientist, and he's going to explain all this for us. So tell us about this new study, Christopher. Well, the, the new study that really has it made really nutrition such an exciting thing to talk about is an ingredient called MenaQ7K2. 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 MenaQ7K2, MenaQ7K2. MenaQ7K2 is, is the most important of, of the, of the uh, vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 in this MenaQ7 form, it's really important that it's this particular form. It activates proteins in the body that direct calcium to the bones where it is needed and away from arteries and blood vessels where it is not. And Mena Q7 is the only vitamin K2 clinically proven to do this. These studies have appeared in respected peer-reviewed journals such as Osteoporosis International, Thrombosis and Hemostasis, and the British Journal of Nutrition read by esteemed medical professionals and nutritional scientists who have taken that message to consumer audiences. It just recently came out that showed in women who were taking vitamin K2 in this MenaQ7 form, it's really important that it's this particular form, which is, is, is a long-acting form, they actually showed improvement in their endothelial function. If you're not taking the MenaQ7 K2 with your calcium supplement or with a typical westernized diet where a lot of things are fortified with calcium, you run the risk of actually aging and stiffening your arteries. And now to television. The message crossed the United States via morning programs and news segments. Okay, but let's talk about the surprise here, and that is that there are some supplements that people generally think of when it comes to uh, strengthening your bone matter that are actually really good for your heart. Yeah, this is something that's really important to emphasize to, for, to, for people. A lot of people are taking calcium supplements alone, mm -hmm. and, the, and what that is potentially doing is it's actually stiffening their arteries. What they need to do is make sure that in the calcium supplements that they're taking, that it also contains MenaQ7 K2. That's a new uh, vitamin K2 that we're now understanding, drives calcium from where it could be hazardous, where it's gonna make your arteries thicker, mm -hmm. to it driving to the bones where we actually need to support optimal bone health. And then when I started to do the research, I got really, really actually amazed at the evidence out there that is suggesting that vitamin K2 keeps calcium in the bones. Ah, there's the key. And it doesn't allow it to build up in the arteries. And made its way all the way to Australia, touching millions of lives in the process. That's not only good for your bones, but also keeps your heart healthy. New research has found that vitamin K2 can keep women healthier for longer the vitamin is still fairly new to Australia. It was only approved by the TGA in October last year, but already almost a dozen supplement companies are manufacturing it. Doctors and dietitians taught audiences about the importance of vitamin K2, but most importantly, how they could correct their own deficiencies through the quality supplements readily available to them. Supplements that feature Mena Q7 Vitamin K2 clinically proven and patented to deliver the promise of better health. We added vitamin K to the formula, and we added, by the way, vitamin K2, not vitamin K1. We added vitamin K2 because vitamin K2 is what tells vitamin D uh, how to calcify something or not calcify it. For example, in the bone, Vitamin K directs vitamin D to calcify bone, which is where we want it. But in, for example, in the arterial wall, in the wall of your arteries, there's a vitamin K dependent protein that, that receives or connects with vitamin K and that prevents the calcification of the, of the artery. So we added vitamin K because vitamin K and vitamin D work together. 